Hello, everybody. This is Dan Bigman, president of Bigman Geophysical and the GPR professor at LearnGPR.com. I hope everybody's doing well out there. hope this message finds you well and that you're healthy and safe <clears throat> kind of during these awkward times in our world. However, uh, I wanted to put something out and talk a little bit about ways that you can improve yourself as a professional in GPR, not just motivational and, you know, whatever development. Um, I mean, it's talking a couple of things that you could do to improve yourself as a GPR technician or, or non-destructive testing professional. Uh, during these times, we may only be in kind of stay-at-home mode for another couple weeks, could be a couple months, don't know, don't know where you live, but um, I mean, you can see obviously I've been staying at home for a while now. My hair is getting getting pretty long and shaggy. Uh, but I wanted to kind of bring you all a quick message and talk about a few things that we, that myself and my team are doing to try to continue to upgrade our skills uh, during this time. <clears throat> the first two, and walking isn't one of them, although I'm on a walk right now, that should be number six is you should stay healthy and active. But first two are common sense. Uh, unfortunately, common sense is not always common practice. And so I'm going to give them to you anyway. And then the other three, I think, are pretty unique and things that we're doing in order to uh, get better. So number one, right, and you've heard this, I'm sure, tons and over and over again, but you should be reading more, right? You should be reading more while you have some time at home and ah, get this thing back in. Ah, my other one fell out too. Let's see here. So you should be reading more. There we go. Got both of them back in. Um, you know, you should be consuming books now. Uh, get up a little bit earlier, read a little bit every, every morning. I mean, I read a ton, but um, I'm reading even more, even more now. I mean, I'm reading all sorts of stuff, books on concrete inspection, um, including ultrasonics and eddy current, <clears throat> uh, resistivity, things like that, infrared. Um, I'm reading books on sales. I'm reading a book now, it's this thick on the history of, of, of IBM. Um, so definitely read more. And we want to help you, so go to um, you know, go to learngpr.com or bigmageo.com and uh, grab my book. It's short. It's a perfect book for now, uh, 117 page or something like that to get you kind of started with GPR, but uh, we'd love to help you. I'll probably put that on sale as well. Just kind of caught the sun. Uh, but you should be reading more. All right, number two, <clears throat> you should be taking courses or looking to build up your continuing education credits while you have this time. Uh, my wife, for example, just knocked out two years of continuing education credits for her profession. And um, she's done now, you know, for two years. And she knocked it out in like four days uh, while she was at home with the kids and they were doing some work. So you should be doing that. We did just restructure the entire platform at Learn GPR Academy. Um, we just put up two, about seven or eight more hours of video across two additional courses on data processing. Um, so go check it out. Uh, we've reduced the pricing through the end of April, 2020. Uh, to help people engage with this kind of content. And we're doing the same thing at my company. We're doing OSHA, our OSHA courses now. We did uh, sales training for my guys uh, as well. We did, um, I did an infrared thermography uh, course, right? So I'm doing courses. I mean, you can't stop, stop learning. So courses are critical. Um, okay, so those are the two common sense ones everyone should be doing. Um, but do, do, if you are interested in GPR, go check out uh, Learn GPR Academy uh, for a reduced pricing and <clears throat> Check out all the new stuff we've just up uploaded. Uh, okay, number three, what should you be doing? Reprocessing old data. So what's interesting about a career is when you go through a project and you think you kind of have it right and you look at it a couple years later or a year later, a couple months later, you notice things that you didn't notice when it was project time. And um, I mean, I even looked at my dissertation recently it's from you know eight nine years ago whatever, and uh, man, some of the some of the interpretations I would never make today, and some of the things I said I would never say. But we always grow, right? That's kind of the point. And so as you get a career, you get more experience, you learn more. Uh, it's always interesting to go back and look at and, and reprocess data. So reprocess data, it'll bring out <clears throat> you know way more insight now to look at something you already did a couple of years back by starting from zero and going back and reprocessing and reinterpreting. The information you may never show it to anybody but for yourself it's going to be a huge benefit because you'll look at those old data with new eyes and that's going to help you understand where you were limited before and kind of where you've come you know all this way um, so go back and reprocess old gpr data and uh, um, 
you know, we actually just did this on, on the YouTube channel, so make sure you check it out. Uh, one of my guys, Tyler, and myself did a, a live stream. We're going to do a couple more of those coming up uh, where we took old data and reprocessed it and were able to see kind of what was going on. So that's important. Um, so number, let's see, number four is do experiments. You know, we're often so busy and working that we can't uh, do experiments. Hey. Um, social distancing, keeping my distance, but saying hi, being a good neighbor. Um, but so you don't ever get the time to do experiments. And one of the important things in doing experiments is you really get to learn the different functionalities of your systems. And I don't care if it's GPR, EM, uh, ultrasonic, whatever it is, I don't, it doesn't matter. Point is do the same project, even if it's around your house, two or three or four times with different settings and see what the outcomes are. Because uh, I, I did an example of this. You always learn so much when you do the same project multiple times. We never get to do that, right? In the field, in the field, we never get to do that. We always get to do it one time and we're rushed often in the field. But having some time and going out, literally locating pipes and utilities, I mean, around this whole place, you know, wherever, doesn't matter. Just locating some pipes and utilities and do the same project over with a new frequency and see what the differences are. Or take the same unit and do it over and do a grid that's half a meter apart and then a meter apart and then two meters apart and see how the data look when you plot it, you know, as a time slice view. Um, go check the settings, right? Do a one with no settings, one, you know, with some filters on it and see if that makes a difference. doesn't matter. Do, do experiment. So I did an experiment example it would be um, uh, on, the, on the YouTube channel here. Go, you can go look for it where I basically did the same grid twice. One time I went unidirectional and the other time I went zigzag. And so it's a direct comparison of the same pipe and the quality was far better unidirectional than zigzag. Now, I tell people this all the time, but unless we showed it to them, right, it kind of just didn't make sense. I said it was going to be a sawtooth pattern for your pipe, but, you know, they believe me, didn't believe me, or it didn't hit home until I gave them the exact example. Here's the same exact pipe collected twice. Once it was unidirectional, once it was zigzag back and forth, and there were obviously different quality data. So go do experiments. That's the number four. Number five, okay, number five is go do sample projects right now in and around your neighborhood or wherever you can get access to if you have the time. And um, uh, uh, this is going to be great because this will help you during your downtime create excellent case study data potentially for marketing materials, brochures, uh, teaching materials, lunch and learns you might do for your customers. Um, you probably have tons of them from the field anyway, but guess what? Now you have total control of what you want to do, right? You, you're, you're designing the survey. You're designing the, the project. So go out and get sample data. <clears throat> you know, take instruments that you haven't used all that much and use them and create sample data sets. Uh, let's say that you, you do both concrete scanning and utility locating, but you mostly do utility locating. Go to your basement. Get some sample data from the rebar there. Go into your garage if you have one. Right, get some sample data from in there. If you live in an apartment building, go to the stairwell. Get some sample data there. Go collect a bunch of information that will look really good, or not, and you'll learn from it, but <clears throat> getting sample data is gonna be really, really important. We just did this out here, multi-channel system, uh, and basically our sample or our experiment was how fast could we go from start to processed data with pipes and utilities and cables identified in a certain amount of space. And so we didn't know the answer to that until we did the experiment, number one. And then number two was, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating our own project, right? Going, getting a case study, a sample data set. Well, a great experiment would be us doing it with a single channel system and seeing how long it took to do the same thing and, uh, and then making that comparison. Uh, that would be a great experiment. But <clears throat> I think these are five things, right? So to kind of recap, number one, go read some more. Uh, it's, it's, it's critical. And read in your field, read in your industry, you know, um, read about the skills you need, uh, whether you're in the workplace and you're a manager or you're in the field and you're a technician. If you're a technician, I'm going to break the news to you now. I don't know if anyone's told you this, but you're a salesperson too. And so go learn how to sell your services, intangibles. There are great books on that. Um, so go read. Number two, do courses and build up your CE credits now. By the way, GP, uh, Bigman Geophysical, we just approved as an RCEP provider so we can offer continuing education credits for engineers. 
And uh, if you're interested, you know, reach out to us and we'll set something up for you to help you get, get some of those credits completed. Um, all right, that was number two, take courses. Number three, reprocess old data sets. Reprocess old data sets. I'm telling you, man, if <laughs> the amount that you get from going back to something you already did that you thought you did really well, ah, get windy. You thought you did really well. You probably did okay, but you'll see how much better you can do really helps. Because then you have a direct comparison to what you did two years ago and what you're doing now. Uh, experiment. Do the same thing over and over again and adjust your parameters, right? Adjust the way you collect it. Uh, and then number five is, uh, number four, number five is go get some sample data. Good quality, high level sample data you can use. If number one, for practice. Number two, for marketing material. Number three, for, you know, lunch and learns or whatever. For social media, by the way. That's, a, that's an added benefit of doing all this. This is tons of content that you can throw out onto social and promote to your customers while you're in quarantine or lockdown or stay at home or, or just slow. You might just be, uh, knocked it out again, I'm getting used to these earbuds. Um, you know, times just might be slow. And so if you have that time, this is a great time to push out onto social media. And these are things that are gonna help you develop content because it's all just kind of documenting what you're doing documenting your reprocessing, documenting your experiment. Um, hope this helps. Sorry if it was a little wobbly. Get out here on a walk. Trying to stay a little healthy. Definitely not eating good enough. You know, too many cookies on this uh, stay at home, but um, trying to eat some, trying to eat both healthy and non-healthy. But I hope this was helpful. Hope it was valuable. If you thought it can help somebody else, please share it around. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And uh, click the like button if you felt like there was something that you'd like. If I miss something, if there's something unique that you're doing to get better during this time, please put it in the comments below. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. So stay healthy, stay well. We wish you all the best. You were going to get out of this and then everybody will be back in the field locating again. And uh, it'll be exciting times. So take care.